guys welcome back to the channel um yeah didn't know really what to do for this video kind of spent the whole week just kind of rattling my brain to work out what to do for the next video um as you can kind of see in the background it's a bit like messy like i have loads of like things ever it's because i'm remodeling my room you know remodeling the sewing room so then i can actually have like a sewing table and stuff so i can actually do proper work instead of trying to fit everything on that one table you kind of caught a glimpse of on the previous videos and stuff but anyway today i thought since it seems like it's interesting to just talk because from what i saw in the last video where everyone basically jumped on it because Ryder had removed the information and it was in the news that like all the allegations everything i'm kind of gonna stay away from allegations <laughs> right now just for my own safety but anyway so today i thought let me look at something that i people in, in the fashion industry already know and i already know happen so there's a phrase that i know that everyone's probably heard is like everything happens for a reason and especially in fashion everything happens for a reason or there is a reason behind everything like designers wouldn't casually leave their house or new designers wouldn't suddenly come in and join as a creative team if there wasn't a reason behind it within this video i'm going to give you some examples of it so the first one will be the demna glasavia and the vetements balenciaga case um, I'll be talking about the, I believe it's the Givenchy and the newest one, the Givenchy kind of case with uh, the guy from ALYX, I forgot his name, and other cases that I can think of. There is a few of them that I can think of that kind of pop up, but I can't remember them to this day, so I'll probably put the number on the screen. But yeah, I'm going to be doing that all, switching the camera angles and everything, because I thought might as well be fancy about it. But yeah. So the first case I mentioned was the Demna Glasavia Vetements Balenciaga situation. If you're wondering why this angle is a bit weird, it's because I got it on like a mini tripod, which is a bit janky. I might have to get a better one. It's one of those fake gorilla tripods. But anyway, yeah. So when Demna started studying, he's a Georgian designer. If you didn't know who he is, probably picture there. He studied in, he studied a master's in fashion in the Royal School of Arts Antwerp so he was studying in Antwerp the same place that Margiela studied the same place that Walter van Brodock studied Raf Simmons studied like all the Antwerp six studied everyone that is kind of big in that other side of fashion all studied in these kind of schools the East the European and like those type of schools so anyway at the time um, he was deciding he wants to set up the brand Vetements, which is a parody brand. It was set up to make fun of Parisian fashion because Vetements directly translates into French, I believe, just it translates into clothing. So he was trying to parody French fashion and kind of the whole world of fashion. So he set it up with, I believe, six other designers. I don't know, I'll have to fact check that. But he set up with six other people and the other six people <clears throat> their identities have never been revealed and stuff like that. They're the rest of the design team and the rest of the business team. I think his brother was part of it. I'll have to check that as well. But anyway, the reason why I said the school is because they kept in, the school kept in contact with them now. Like, it was kind of a um, two-way street. They kept in contact with each other. They were building each other up. That monster started to get popular and stuff like that. People were starting to wear the different styles, different clothings. But as I said, the reason I mentioned it is because the school was friends with this big organization called Curring or the Curring Group. Um, another very, and like the Curring Group is one of those big companies that owns multiple brands, multiple assets, stuff like that. Another one is the Carlyle Group and another one is LVMH. Like these kind of big companies own and dictate what kind of happens in fashion. Sometimes they give like funding, like loads of designers have worked under these br these big companies and they kind of like put them in certain places. So as Vermont was starting to get really, really popular, at the same time, Balenciaga was losing interest because Ale I believe it was Alexander Wang at the creative helm while, while Demna was building Vermont. So Alexander Wang was kind of designing the new seasons and stuff like that. And it wasn't, it was losing popularity basically until 
one day where Kering was like, we like one of your ex-students. They said that to the school, we like one of your ex-students. I believe his name was Demna. And because they had in contact with the school, they were like, okay, we're gonna give you the details of the student. So Kering got into, uh, into contact with Demna and within a week to two weeks, Demna was then put as the creative director of Balenciaga. And at the same time, Alexander Wang's contract was cut short. So he had a departure, which everyone was like, oh, so sad he's leaving. No, it's because the Kering group saw that Demna was popular. So they thought, let me put a popular designer in a brand that we own, that we can easily get like them, we can easily grab them. And they basically ended up being the creative, well, Demna ended up being the creative designer for Balenciaga. And now, well, not even now, recently, well, I don't know how recent actually, it's been like a good while now. Remember, in the news, Demna officially left Vetements and he's now the lead creative director of Balenciaga. That isn't just for like coincidental moves, it's probably because of financial gain, it's probably because of a different work environment. Because I remember in an interview, he was saying that when he worked in Vetement, it was very kind of crazy and fun and loud. But when he went into Balenciaga, it was a very different vibe. It was very structured. It was very atelier based. It was very like set in stone what you do. And he found it easier to design in Balenciaga than in Betamont, which means that he probably decided that he would rather cut off his original brand and leave with Balenciaga. Obviously, I'm going off interviews and stuff like that. I don't know how the business works directly. But that's one of the examples of stuff like this coincidentally happening or people leaving uh, or new people arriving or contracts being cut short. But yeah, that was the first example. Right, so example number two would be the Givenchy situation. So recently Givenchy did like brought a new creative director in. I believe his name is Matthew Matthew M. Williams. Um, you probably would have not heard that name before, but another name you would have maybe heard of is ALYX. So Matthew M. Williams is the kind of lead designer for ALYX. And yeah, sorry about the bob, it's literally me hitting my knee into the table. But <laughs> yeah, so he was obviously the lead designer for ALYX. They were kind of pushing the kind of boundaries when it came to designs like they were trying out different styles that kind of a bit more technical kind of darkish feel to it i always like looking at the stuff for reference but i feel like they are very similar to other brands that i already like like for example helia emile i really love helia emile but i feel like alyx and helia emile are very similar but anyway that's a whole different topic for another day but yeah recently givenchy brought him in because I have to admit, Givenchy have not been doing well over the last couple of years. Their profits have gone down, the interest has gone down of the actual brand, and just generally, you don't see any big like garments anymore like that kind of stand out. Really, the last time I saw a good Givenchy garment was like a couple of years ago, really. Every time I think of Givenchy, I think of that stupid t-shirt where it's just got Givenchy text and it's like muscle fit. It's the dumbest t-shirt I've ever seen and I don't know why people like it. Same as that and the joggers, cringe. But like stuff like that, those type of products and stuff are not making money for the brand. They're what they call the ready to wear collections or the like wardrobe fillers. So it's like pieces that they make just to make money. It's not actually got a good design to it. It maybe has the logo, it has some kind of imagery on it or something simple because it's easy to manufacture, it's easy to make, and you don't. it doesn't cost them much, and it's a money flipper, so it's like, they might make it for 30 quid, but then it flips it to 300 quid, so they have 270 brown man's profit on one t-shirt. That's the way they kind of work now with Givenchy, but the thing is, obviously they're losing popularity, because not many people like the style anymore, that kind of skinny fit tracksuit and the muscle fit top and all that cringy rubbish. Like, no one, is a huge well no one that i know personally is a huge fan of that obviously those people that are a huge fan of those but that's on them that's uh, that's on them but 
yeah, they've been losing popularity. So what do they do? Because they're partnered with LVMH, who also, I believe, are in connection with ALYX. LVMH is another variation of the current, like, kind of current group system and stuff like that. And they brought Matthew from ALYX into Givenchy as the new creative director. I believe they, the old one was called, or the, the previous person that was in Givenchy was called Claire White Keller, I believe, or something like that. But yeah, they brought him in because they're like, okay, he's doing popular, he's doing money. He's doing, like stuff like this is all coincidental that these things type of, these kind of things happen. Um, because it's a business move really like think about the popularity of a brand and the popularity of a designer bringing them into a new field where they can make better money or make more money is kind of a big thing so yeah he's really the second example i want to watch what he does though because his style is not exactly similar to Givenchy like his style is very modern and like very kind of technical and very like metals and stuff like that like I don't know if Givenchy really fit, but you know what? We have to wait and see what happens. But yeah, that's my example two. So yeah, number three, my third case is the And Müller Meister Sebastian Minul. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Um, that case. So recently, um, Sebastian Minula, the head designer of And Müller Meister stood down from his role i believe after 10 years of working with them i believe um so with this case is a bit of a different one because there's a lot of secrecy and rumors about this case so earlier this year basically or within like the previous years and stuff like that there was information that had surfaced about uh, the New Guards group, the group that basically owns, it's like the same thing as LVMH and the current group, the New Guards group, they own brands like Off-White and like, I've got notes here, um, yeah, Marsilio, Burton and stuff like that, they own a lot of brands like that and they own, I believe, Andamula Meister, now they do. But according to this, is like they wanted to buy out Andamula Meister and i believe now from the information i've got um because it is from that i'm part of a group that talks about stuff like this and they're saying obviously they have information from anonymous sources stuff because they don't want to be revealed that the people that the, the new guards group basically bought out and Müllermeister and let go of sebastian and the whole design team once the deal was put forward um so no one knows what's actually going to happen to the brand so obviously when sebastian was let go even though sebastian is an amazing designer he's as i said he's worked for andrew the master for so long now and like the, I, I only know and Meister from his work if you know what i mean i don't really know the old stuff but i'm going to do more research into it because i've started to gain like a really good interest in Anne's work um basically yeah he almost built the last 10 years of the brand i don't know i, I think it is 10 yeah it's 10 years like he's built the brand for 10 years and now he's left because there's a new owner of the brand it's no longer independent it's been bought out basically so then they've got rid of Sebastian and they wanted, I believe they want to do an overhaul of all the work. So that means the old themes and the old moods and stuff like that that Anne had put in place and the new Sebastian basically fueled through. It's probably going to be gone. I don't know up to my voice just then. I had a voice break. Ah. I don't know what's going to happen to the brand. It's going to be gone and we're not i don't think anyone is really sure who's going to replace sebastian so it's kind of like i feel like the brand's going to have a total overhaul but then it's going to lose interest because lots of people that love the brand like me we love sebastian's work we love what has already been said and it's kind of like he's always been questioning the idea of gender identity and all his work he's been pushing the boundaries but he's also been going safe with some silhouettes and it's like pushing the lines between 
what's male, what's female, what's men's wear, what's women's wear, stuff like that. And because he's gone now, no one knows what's gonna happen about the brand. So it's kind of like, it's like the previous cases with, um, with Williams and stuff like that. No one knows what Williams gonna do with Givenchy, but he's gonna do something good because Givenchy need the money. Or we didn't know what was gonna happen when uh, Demna joined Vetements, but the, no, joined Balenciaga. But basically, he made Balenciaga 2.0, and uh, not Vetements 2.0, and it kind of he built the Balenciaga as a better version of Vetements. So no one knows what's really going to happen with Andy Mullermeister now, because obviously the person who's set in stone what is the work is no longer there. Same as the team, they're no longer there. So yeah, we don't know what's going to happen. So yeah, that's my three points that I'm stating because I don't want to go too long into this because there's a lot of information that I could bring up in regards to other designers and other houses and like moves that brands will do in like, upcoming years and stuff like that. But obviously that's going to be another video for another day because I can then long this out if I really wanted to. But yeah, but no, thank you a lot for listening and joining, watching, whatever. Um, happy that I'm really I'm, st I'm actually still shocked that I'm, my last video went over I think to 500 views but you know what I kind of expected it because it was a very like hot topic and I don't expect I think maybe I'm gonna get five or ten views on this one yeah doesn't really matter I don't really care but anyway yeah make sure to like comment subscribe you know what to do I ain't gonna be saying this every time hit up my social medias i still need to find you know i'm gonna keep on saying it until i find someone still need to find someone for higher or lower so if you are interested definitely hit up my socials um as for videos i don't know when i'm going to be dropping the next couple of ones because i've got an internship coming up in a couple of weeks so i might not be able to drop videos anytime soon but you know what if i end up dropping videos i end up dropping videos if i don't then thanks for watching <laughs> basically i don't know when i'm gonna be seeing you next i might be seeing you next year or 10 years from now who knows but anyway as I said thank you a lot for watching hopefully you liked the video it's this one is going to be a shorter one because i couldn't really think of any ideas but if you have any ideas for any new videos coming up that you want me to talk about or want me to like discuss drop it in the comments definitely drop it in the comments and if it is easy for me to do like I could just easily set it up like this like talking and if I can do screen grabs because I got my laptop here casually then yeah do it if it's vlogging yeah that ain't gonna happen anytime soon no but <laughs> basically yeah if any ideas or any kind of concepts or stuff just leave them in the comments and I'll definitely take a look at them because I don't get many comments so the comments I see I do read them um except for ones that can we be friends because those are literally bots that are trying to hack into my account but you know what? i don't care but anywho yeah thanks a lot for watching like comment subscribe you know what to do do everything like everyone has told you and yeah peace out people